For the, for the last 50 or 60 years, pest management has relied on pesticides in the main and that's been the mainstay of, of agriculture. And that, that's okay while the chemicals are available and while they work, but if they're either withdrawn or they cease to work because the insects develop resistance, then growers are forced to change and that change uh, usually is, is IPM. IPM stands for Integrated Pest Management and what it tries to do is integrate compatible control measures, biological, cultural and chemical options. So brassica growers have to deal with a, a range of pests and uh, depending on the location and the type of crop they're growing, those usually include a, a couple of caterpillar pests, which are cabbage white butterfly and diamondback moth. Uh, it often also includes aphids, cabbage aphid in particular, although it can be green peach aphid as well, and often leaf miners. And in an IPM strategy, we have to deal with all of those pests in a compatible way. Uh, the, the beneficial species in brassica crops can be either predators or parasitoids. So the parasitoids are wasps usually that live inside the, their host. Predators walk up and eat them. What it means is that to complete the life cycle of any one of those beneficials, typically one wasp will be reared out of one aphid. So only one aphid is required for that wasp to complete its life cycle. Whereas things like hoverflies and ladybirds and lacewings, the larvae of those species require lots of meals of aphids before they can reach the pupal stage and then turn into adults. So typically the predators work well or better on large populations of pests and parasitoids are very efficient when the population is at a low level. Uh, most people are familiar with seeing hoverflies. They're the flies that you can see commonly in the garden that hang standing still in the air. So the adults aren't predatory, but they lay their eggs usually where there's uh, a food source for the offspring, and so that's aphids. So when a, a hoverfly egg hatches, it turns into a maggot, so it has no obvious head and no legs, but it's quite capable of walking around the canopy of the plants and feeds on aphids. It only eats a few aphids when it's small, but when they're large, hoverfly maggots can eat a huge number of, of prey, and so they, we see them as the clean-up uh, agents for, for aphid colonies. So the, the parasitic wasps that attack aphids, there's a female wasp has a, a thing called an ovipositor or a stinger at the tip of its abdomen, and it jabs that into the body of the aphid. Uh, it injects its own egg into the body of the aphid. That egg then hatches into a maggot inside the aphid and over the next week, two weeks, the, that maggot grows by feeding on the body of the aphid, eating it from the inside. When it's ready to pupate, that maggot kills the aphid totally and it uses the, the cuticle, which is the skin of the aphid, as the case for its own cocoon. And so the, the aphid is no longer an aphid, it's a wasp cocoon, but it looks like a very puffed up, golden coloured aphid. Aphids are very small insects and the wasps that, that parasitise them are even smaller. So an adult wasp with wings will emerge from the aphid mummy, the cocoon, so it cuts a trapdoor in the body of the aphid and a, a wasp pulls itself out. It's obviously very, very small and that sized insect is difficult to spot and certainly difficult to distinguish from other flying insects that might be in the crop. But the cocoon will remain glued to the leaf and because it's not mobile, it's easier to find. So when someone is monitoring for them, they can look for the cocoons and they can tell whether the parasite is still in there or whether it's emerged by whether or not there's a, a, a trap door open. There's predators that will attack diamondback moth, but in brassica crops that I've seen in New Zealand, probably the most important beneficial species is a parasitoid wasp. So it's a, a wasp that lives inside the caterpillar. The wasp 
that stings the caterpillar, puts its egg inside. The wasp is small, but it's about the size of a mosquito, and so it is visible. But then the caterpillar looks apparently healthy until it spins its cocoon. And then it's only in the pupil stage that it's obvious whether it's parasitized or not. If someone doing the monitoring wants to find out is the, this caterpillar parasitized or not, the, really the only way of finding out is to, to pull the caterpillar apart and look for a free living maggot inside the body of the caterpillar. So there's a, a huge range of insects that can be active in, in crops, pests obviously, beneficial species, and there are good chemical options now to uh, basically use alongside beneficial insects so farmers get better pest management with fewer insecticides. So there's usually a saving in insecticides with no additional costs and certainly better production, better yields, because they're not losing to, to pests. In addition, those, those insects are, are in many crops, they're useful as pollinators. And so people know bees as pollinators, but there's also a lot of non-bee pollination. So flies, wasps, beetles, other insects also contribute quite massively to, to pollination in certain crops.